This is a video demonstration on how to solve the linear programming question from the May 2011 Edexcel D1 paper. What we've got here is a graph and figure 2 shows the constraints of the linear programming problem. They've been shaded on the uh, one side of the line. R is the feasible region there and we've got to write down the inequalities that form region R. Now we do have to be a little bit careful with this. What we're going to do is we're going to take this first one here which is 6x plus 5y equals 60. And of course we've got to put the inequality sign in there. We've got to know which way round to do it. Some people can look at this and see exactly which way round it's got to go. Other people maybe not so much. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rearrange that equation to give 5y equals minus 6x plus 60. And then I'm going to rearrange that just to be y equals minus 6 over 5x plus uh, 60 over 5 is 12. Now we can think about this a little bit more. We know from this we've got it shaded above. We want the stuff below. So if we want it below, that's less than. So we want y is less than or equal to, because this is not a dotted line, minus 6 over 5x plus 12. Now you can leave it in that format or you can go back to the original one which of course would then mean we had 6x plus 5y is less than or equal to 60. So there is our constraint. For the second one we have our expression 3x equals 2y which would rearrange to give us y is equal to uh, 3 over 2x. We want the stuff below this so we would want y is less than or equal to 3 over 2x or rearranging that into this format we would have uh, well 2y is less than or equal to 3x or if you want to write it the other way around 3x is greater than or equal to 2y that would be okay as well. This one here x equals 2y rearrange that if you want to y equals a half x we want the stuff above that, so we want y to be greater than or equal to a half x, which rearranges to 2y is greater than or equal to x, or if you want it the other way around, y is less than or equal to, sorry, x is less than or equal to 2y. That's three of them done. The fourth one here is 2x plus 3y equals 12. Rearrange that one, you're going to get 3y equals minus 2x plus 12 or y is equal to minus 2 thirds x plus 4. We want the stuff above it, so we want y to be greater than or equal to minus 2 thirds x plus 4, or rearranging that one, 3y is greater than or equal to minus 2x plus 12, 3y plus 2x is greater than or equal to 12. And there we've got each of our constraints written in the inequality way, not just the equality way they're presented on our diagram. For the next part of the question, it tells us that we're going to be maximizing 3x plus y, and we're asked to find the optimal, optimal values of x and y. We've got to make our method clear. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this expression, 3x plus y, and then we're going to think about what's going on with that. Now we don't know what the uh, objective function is representing, but let's say it was profit or something like that. We're going to choose a value for profit. So I'm going to just choose p equals 3. And then what I'll do is I'll choose values of x and y that satisfy this equation. So if 3 is equal to 3x plus y, then one set of solutions I could have, I could have x being 0, which would make y 3. Or I could have... Um, y being 0, which would make x 1. And what that does is it gives me the endpoints of an objective line. So what I'm going to do now is plot that line. So this is 0, 3 and 1, 0. And there is my objective line. Now I chose for p to be 3. I could have chosen it to be 6. If I'd chosen it to be 6, then I would have ended up with a slightly different line. But of course, it's exactly the same gradient. And so by choosing an increasing value for profit, we can move this line, keeping that gradient the same, to wherever we want it to go to. Now we wish to maximize. So what we're going to do is we're going to make the value as big as possible and still be in the feasible region. That is keeping on moving it until we get to the last possible place. That's there. 
that is our optimal solution. That's the best possible solution that we could have. And of course, we need to find the coordinates for this because we need to know the values for x and y. Well, that comes on the um, uh, this constraint line and that constraint line. They are x equals 2y and 6x plus 5y equals 60. So, of course, I've got to find the values that solve both of these. Well, x is equal to 2y, so let's work with that. 6 times 2y plus 5y equals 60. So we've got 12y plus 5y equals 60, or 17y equals 60. So we know that y equals 60 over 17. Taking that, we know that x is 2y, so x must, of course, be 120 over 17. And we could simplify these if we wanted to, and that gives us um, y is what's that, 3 and 9 seventeenths. And this would give us uh, 7 and 1 17th. And of course, you can use a calculator to work those out if you want to. The next part of the question asks us to obtain the optimal value of the objective function. Well, the objective function is 3x plus y. So what I need is 3 times my x value plus my y value. And very simply, all I'm going to do is use the calculator to work this one out. 3 times 120 over 17 plus 60 over 17 and I get the answer 420 over 17 or 24 and 12 seventeenths. And the last part of the question tells us that we've got to have integer values for x and y and we need to write down the optimal values for x and y. Well if we have a look at our graph We've got our value there, which we know is non-integer values, but each of these thicker lines is representing a new integer on the x or y scale. So if we go through and look at what we've got, we've got an integer solution at that point. We've got one there. We've got one there, but that's actually not in the feasible region. And we've got some more over here, and we can sort of put a dot where each of them are. If we come back to our objective line, all we're going to do is follow that along until we get to the last one, is this one, that's the last one we get to any further and we, we're outside of the region or there are no more. So this one here is our optimal solution if, we only, if we're only allowed integers. So of course that one is at 6, 4. And there we've solved the whole question.